Hi, everybody. Welcome to more books with B. Sharice. I am your host, B. Sharice Moore. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've been on about a week and a half hiatus. It's not something I meant to do, but you know, life gets in the way. Last week was my birthday. I had some other things that I had to, to figure out and, you know, so I couldn't post, but I'm here. I'm back and I thank you all for tuning in and sticking with me. All right. So this is the last week of Black History Month and I wanted to end it with a bang. So I chose to end it with one of my favorite books. And that book is Akata Witch by Nettie Okorafor. All right, Akata Witch by Nettie Okorafor. So Akata Witch is the book that I've probably always been waiting for. You know, um, I'm pretty sure that the, the 12 or 13 year old me you know, while reading this book was absolutely enthused and totally entertained and uh, just taken for a ride on a journey, you know, to Nigeria and to some other mythical places and back. So Akata Witch by Nedia Korafor is about a young girl named Sunny. Now, something that I, I, uh, really appreciated that Nnedi Okorafor did with this book is she really stretched the main character's otherness in that Sunny is not just a girl who has albinism, she is an albino, but she's also the only person in her immediate family who was born in the United States so though her heritage, of course, is Nigerian, because she was born in the United States, she is considered an Akata. And now that her parents have moved and her family's moved back to, the, to uh, Nigeria, she's an outcast in more than one way. First, for her albinism, and secondly, for the fact that she was not born in Nigeria. And so she is considered an Akata. So as the story goes, um, Sunny befriends a young boy uh, who is in her class named Orlu. And soon after she realizes, or she discovers that she has these powers. And there's something that she kind of sort of has always known she's had but it takes Orlu and then his friend Chi Chi to really, you know, bring this out of her through ritual. So Orlu, Chi Chi, and Sunny embark on this incredible journey. And soon they meet up with another Black American boy named Sasha. And they all are learning how to control their abilities. They are all provided a different elder to work with and to actually hone these skills. And soon they find themselves on quite the adventure. And that adventure includes actually chasing after a child mass murderer in Nigeria. So, um, one of my favorite places in Akata Witch is Leopard Knox. Leopard Knox is like this uh, magical meeting place. There's a restaurant there. There's a library there. And, you know, um, the, the elders who mentor Chi Chi, Sasha, Sunny, and Orlu live on the outskirts of Leopard Knox. And this is just a place, a gathering place where the magic is truly brought to life. And um, I, I was so intrigued by the way Nettie Okorafor um, paints this picture of this, this, this place full of juju and, and life and, um, and wealth. And, and tradition, you know, um, I, I just beamed through the entire book. Um, 
And I also appreciated the different techniques that Nettie Okorafor uses in order to bring her characters to life and in order to just discuss, you know, leopard people and to discuss, you know, the, the magic and the juju of this world. And one of the things she does is she actually takes pages from a pamphlet that is given to Sunny to learn more about her powers. And she includes these, these pages from this pamphlet, you know, throughout the entire book. So um, I don't think there is a book that has uh, just made me smile so much. Um, again, this is the book that I wanted when I was 11 years old and 12 years old. And the only thing I had really was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and, um, you know, James and the Giant Peach and um, perhaps A Wrinkle in Time. And I wish I'd had the 12 year old me had A Cotta Witch, you know, and there's also a sequel to A Cotta Witch and it's called A Cotta Warrior. So if you pick up a Kata Witch, it just makes sense to get a Kata Warrior as well so that you can just knock them both off. Um, I recommend a Kata Witch for middle school. Uh, I would say it, you can probably go as low as grade five, uh, grades five through eight or six through eight, depending upon um, the child that you are introducing the book to. But um, it's absolutely perfect, I'd say, for sixth and seventh grade sixth and seventh grade and, and fifth grade if your students are um, are gifted and talented or they're just voracious readers, okay? Um, so as far as an activity is concerned, I would suggest that students come up with their own magical system, okay? And this is something that I'm doing with my own novel you know, where I'm, I'm writing the sacred texts, the so-called sacred texts that accompany each magical order in my own books. And it's just been a lot of fun to create these quote unquote nonfiction texts as a way to provide backstory in my novel. So what I would like you to do as an activity, a fun activity with your students and um, homeschoolers with your children is to have them to create their own magical system and have them create a sacred text. So maybe a book of laws, um, a book of distinguishing marks, um, and a brief history of that particular magical order and perhaps have them create a short pamphlet to go with it, all right? So today's uh, you know episode is pretty brief, but um, A Cotta Witch by Nettie Okorafor. Nettie Okorafor is an extremely talented writer, and she is also the winner of the Nebula and the best ALA Best Fiction for Young Adults, the Amelia Bloomer Award, the Junior Library Guild Selection. So she's run, won tons of, of honors for her work and rightfully so. I do also know that she's in the process of working on um, a television show. And I also know she's involved, and I think that's for um, um, Who Fears Death. All right, for Who Fears Death. And that's another YA novel of hers. And um, I know she's involved, I think, is it with Wild Seed? I think she's involved with Wild Seed and the adaptation of Butler's Wild Seed for television. So if you are not familiar with Nettie Okorafor, this is someone who I believe is a staple in the Black science fiction and um, Africana futurism. I know that she's recoined the term so that she can uh, be sure that is inclusive of writers from Africa, from the continent. But um, she is a, a staple in the genre. 
and she's written fantastic books. And as you can see, this is quite worn and torn because a few of my students have read it and have read it often, and I have read it more than once. So um, please be sure to check her out, all right? And challenge your students to create a nonfiction text that has kind of like a fictional core, all right? So thank you so much for tuning in today. I appreciate you guys. I will be here for you next week. And for March, I'm going to be focusing on books by women authors of color. All right, women authors. So I know that I'm going to be focusing on a couple specific books uh, that I've come across lately that I think will really just make you extremely happy. All right. So hopefully the books are available at your library because I know a lot of people have told me, hey, all these recommendations, I don't have the money to buy these books. But that's what the library is for. So get your library cards. All right. So thank you so much. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to more books with B. Charisse. And a subscription is a fantastic birthday gift for me. I take my birthday gifts how I can get them. So thank y'all so much. Take care. See you next week.